So a quick tour of the hillside garden here. We've got some mullein, some uh, some Tulsi basil. Smells really nice. Got some little baby milkweed started in here. These are uh, habanada sweet peppers. Uh, really nice flavor. It's basically a, a sweet uh, habanero. Got some ginger coming up. Uh, arugula going to flower. Bees really like it. Uh, long purple eggplant. More arugula. I uh, got the mustard popping up there. Green onions starting to flower. Really happy. Uh, this is a uh, episote seasoning here. It's the first time growing this one. Nice, nice aroma. Dill uh, flowering. Parsley, uh, rosemary, creeping thyme, and at the entrance we got this new papaya that's really taken off. <clears throat> it's in this crack that's really fertile. Uh, this is the purple ube, pretty much to the top of the trellis already. And underneath that we got uh, zen long beans. Um, amaranth, I've been seeding amaranth on the sides of the beds. It doesn't really need that much fertility. Um, but this is, this is one of my favorite greens. And I just pick the, the tops and the young leaves are especially tender. Um, but really excellent cooking green. And this first row, she's looking good. Lots more herbs. In the front of the bed here, basil, uh, the kales are doing okay. It's been pretty dry, so we just got some rain. Uh, this lemongrass definitely needs to get cut back. I'll be doing that this week and mulching it into the garden. Uh, the Komahana grape still producing some. This is actually probably one of the better looking cherry tomatoes. Collards are cranking. Um, this sweet pepper is it's been kind of on and off, but it's got a decent fruit set right now. And this Roma has really produced a lot, and it's finally starting to die back. But well, they don't last forever. Eggplant, more peppers. Oh, uh, it's a purple string bean. Thai eggplant. This is a little bit bigger one. And another bean trellis that is ready to get planted with something else. This is an Ethiopian kale that's fallen over. Um, but down this road, you can see uh, there's a comfrey border along the base. We've got a, um, two peach palms here and then uh, some papayas in between those and the living fence. Uh, it's all doing real well. Got a little bit of bitter melon that some people like to eat, but here it's it's uh, mainly a weed for me. But and then here we've got the um, Christmas lima beans that are in full swing now. And I'm just about to harvest these again today, but they are just loaded and really pretty. Really pretty seeds on these. And it just makes a lot of fruit, a lot of food, high protein. This one's actually starting to sprout. So I've been picking them at the yellow stage, and then when I cook them, it doesn't take very long. Um, but you can always, you can also cook them, of course, as a dry bean. But at this point, you can see they shrink down a lot. They're much smaller when they're dry, and then they have, of course, a much longer cook time. Uh, this. Another one of the locally adapted peppers. It's producing well now. 
got a lot more fruit on it as well. Um, a row of uh, daikon coming up here. They've kind of been just in suspended animation until the rain. And of course lots of milkweed that the butterflies like, which is potting and going to seed now. So it'll be coming up in the garden pretty much forever after this point. <laughs> uh, this is the yellow, one of the yellow cherry tomatoes, still producing. People have really liked this one. And I just let these tomatoes go. I didn't prune them at all. And they're like, some of them are almost 10 feet wide at this point. <laughs> uh, these cucumbers also just volunteered. Um, poha is really huge. Um, and it is putting on some fruit as well. It does these little guys and the husks. Known as husk cherry, really nice uh, kind of pineapple flavor. And along the sides, the ground cover is doing pretty well. This is a Vietnamese coriander and uh, Cuban oregano, and then um, the uh, Puerto Luca, which are all edible and useful. And then we got some weeds coming up, and lots of amaranth coming up. You can see all the little baby amaranth on my feet. Um, some grasses, so be weeding that out and putting down some more banana leaves. This is another uh, lima, different lima bean variety. Um, the cassava is mm, approaching eight feet tall, and the taro patch is starting to shrink down, and we're getting. Some that are getting close to harvest, sizing up some roots. Tomatoes dying back. Here's another different type of, of uh, lima bean. This is the uh, Alabama black eyed butter bean. It's fun to say. And this eggplant here is super happy. This is loaded. I don't know why it's so happy, but it's doing it. And Swiss chard, Thai basil, splanthes, garlic chives. And then here we've got, um, this is the uhi on the trellis is another uh, root crop and these are planted in mounds at the base of the bamboo poles and looking great you're gonna get a really nice harvest of those eventually and taro patch here this is the bun long and you can see we've got at the base here you can see it's starting to the corm is starting to get bigger as the energy of the plant shrinks down into that. And then we got this whole other row of taro. And lots of amaranth that's going to seed that all needs to get cut back and just used for mulch. And along this bottom row, oh, also so above us, we've got um, several different racks of bananas. Couple different varieties. And then along this back, we've got a uh, perennial peanut getting established as a ground cover, Brazilian spinach on the right, um, comfrey on the left, and the panax hedge, and then with bananas over, and of course the taro on the right. The comfrey extends all the way down this edge. This papaya is an exotica. It's starting to bloom. Probably needs more mulch and food. This is the mountain yam. These are not quite as vigorous as some of the other ones. You can see some of the birds up there. I've noticed a lot of bird uh, droppings uh, on the leaves and 
free fertilizer, bringing them in. They also hunt pests. So again, the mountain yams and then sweet potatoes. So I've been pulling the sweet potatoes back um, along off the path. I planted them on both sides of the path originally. And then um, to keep, to try to keep them to make bigger roots at the bases, um, I've been kind of coiling them back, at least off the paths and away from uh, the away from the bases of these mounds. And we just added some new, some new mulch around the base of these guys, pulled the sweet potato back and mulched them. Um, cassava, uh, pigeon pea. More cassava over here as well. Uh, we got some turmeric coming up. This is a double purple, uh, purple exterior and purple interior sweet potato. And then we got turmeric. Uh, the cabas put on a lot of new growth. That one, that's not looking quite as good. Should probably give it some manure. And then like behind the cava here, we've got uh, these uh, air potato, which are pretty massive. So these can be uh, prepared and eaten just like a potato. They'll keep for six months at least. Um, and these vines are also related to the, this is the edible air potato. So there's also a, there's a poison version, <laughs> but it's very bitter. It's pretty obvious. So this is all up in the trellis there. Also on this little papaya tree. Cranberry hibiscus, been harvesting it for tea. Um, basil, that's the blue basil. Um, got some new uh, cow peas or uh, long bean coming in as a ground cover. Here, these are some little known root crops uh, that I got some from, for some, from some friends. Uh, this is edible canna. It's got a edible rhizome. These are uh, malanga. Uh, it's a taro relative. And yeah, that pretty much brings us back to the beginning. And I'll just do a quick pan around. Some noni and dropping a lot. And so that is the current state of the garden. It is the, about the end of August. Hope you enjoyed. Aloha.